Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for tuning back in. On this video, we're gonna be installing a extra fuse block, but I'm gonna be doing it as a key on ignition source fuse block so that only when the key is on will this be power. So it will not be hot all the time. So um, a little bit why I'm doing this, this truck, the factory fuse block just doesn't have enough cir circuits in it. And I'm in the middle of installing the hyper, the sniper system from Holly. And I figure I'd go ahead and do a video on this at the same time because I don't want to use too many fuse taps in here. I don't really like to use those. And you can see in here, there's not many circuits in here. The only free circuit I have that I'm not using anymore is the injector circuit, which I might use that to uh, trigger my relay. But other than that, I need all these other circuits in here. And I thought about using these little fuse taps, but then I'd have to do it in probably three or four locations for everything that I need. And I just don't want to do that. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be adding this so that they have six circuits on here and I need circuits for, I'm going to see if I can use it to power the Holly Sniper and then I need one for my distributor and there's a couple other things I need, I can't remember right now, but anyways, this is capable of 120 amps, so 20 amps per circuit that's on here. And that'll work great for all I need it for. And then we're going to be using the relay for it. This is a 120 amp relay. And then what you want to do is use a fuse that is about 20% lower amperage than your relay and your fuse block. That way, if there's any kind of problem, it'll be sure to blow the fuse and not start melting wires and burning them up. So it's kind of a safety thing. So I got one of these mega fuses, that's 100 amps. So 20% of 120 is 96, but there's not a 96 amp fuse. So I just went ahead and went to the 100, figured that'd be good. And then we have a holder for our mega, mega fuse. And then what you need to do is do some research on your wire, which is really easy to do. You can just Google it. Um, what gauge wire you need for how many amps you're using it for and it's determined by the length of wire as well because it'll you know like a long run of wire will have some voltage drop in it so for what I'm doing I'm using four gauge wire and I'm also going to be using these on my battery because I have a side post battery so that I have enough room to stick these on. Now, my battery is a side and a top post battery, but this battery is old, so I don't really know how long it's gonna last. So these extenders will go in here so that I have extra room to put any other wires on there. Plus, there are a couple things in my truck that they want you to hook it directly to the battery and not, so that's what that looked for. I'll bring you back when I got you some more information. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you a basic overview of how I'm gonna wire this up. So you can see on the bottom of the relay, you have different posts on here. You have 87, 30, 86, and 85. They're all labeled around here. And I made a little diagram of what I'm gonna do. I know it's not a great drawing, but just to give you a basic overview. So your battery goes to ground, and then on the positive side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our four gauge wire that I have to the 100 amp fuse that I have. And then from there, we're gonna use the four gauge wire up to terminal 30 on the relay, which is this terminal right here. And then what we're gonna do is 85 just needs to go to a ground source. That's this one right here. And then 86, this other little one right here, this is where we're gonna use to power the relay. So we need to find a key on positive source so that when we turn the key on, it's gonna send power to the relay and then the relay is gonna power up. And then from 87, this is where we're gonna run the wire to our fuse block. So that's what we're gonna be doing next. So now we gotta figure out where we're gonna mount 
the fuse block, the relay, and the fuse itself. Okay, so now I have my extended battery post that I got for the terminals mounted in the battery. Got those in there. And I have my fuse mounted right here on the inner fender. Got the mega fuse holder. Got the battery cable going from the positive up to one side of the fuse. And then on the other side of the fuse, I got a small wire going up to terminal 30 on the relay. And I had to mount the relay kind of backwards because 87 is on the other side and I need to go directly to 30. And I just thought it would be cleaner if I just flipped it around so I have a good path. And then we have our ground wire going from the ground terminal on the relay up to the negative side of the battery. So I got that made. So now what we're doing is we're running our battery cable into the firewall and I drilled another hole down in here and I put one of those Harbor Freight grommets in there and I figure out the length that I needed this wire run. I got one end for the other end of the relay and then I have the wire mark down here where I need to cut it, put our other end on. And then I have the fuse block mounted inside the truck and I'll show you where I put that up. So what I went ahead and did is I mounted it right up there on my uh, parking brake mechanism. Now, the fuse block has mounting holes in the middle of it to run screws through, but I didn't have any screws long enough. So I just went ahead and used uh, two self-tapping screws through it and mounted up there. So that way it's still, it's way out of the way and I think it'll be a great spot for it. So. I'm gonna make my battery cable wire and then uh, I'll bring it back. All right, so now we have our battery cable going from 87 on our relay, terminal 87, down into the firewall and into the interior. And I went ahead and ran the other wire for the trigger to trigger the relay. And that is terminal 86. And I'll show you what I'm doing on the inside to do that. So I'll just show you how I ended up running the wires. Just have them coming in through the firewall in that hole I showed you. And I just have them tucked up under my dash. So I just tuck them up every once in a while going along the dash. You don't really, you don't see it hanging down at all. You can see it hanging down right here, but it is what it is all the way down there. I'll go through the other side and show you what it looks like under there. I'm gonna get my ass under here. And then we have This is it right here, running all the way down under the dash and up to our fuse block. And it's bolted on there. So we're good there. Now, for our trigger wire, what I'm going to do is I pulled the factory fuse block down and the injector fuse we're not gonna be using anymore because I'm not running injectors to the factory injector. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that fuse to trigger the relay. So you have one side is keyed on power on one side of the fuse and the other side would have gone to the injectors. So what I'm gonna do is cut that wire and I'm gonna solder this wire and run it out to our other side of our relay for the trigger source. That ought to work pretty good. So I'm gonna bring you back after I get that wired in and it working and I'll show you it working. All right, so we're all done. Everything's working, works great. Um, a lot of this wiring is just other stuff I'm finishing wiring like the sniper and my electric fan and stuff like that. So this isn't a finished wiring job by any means, but we'll just go over quick. Um, we had the power wire going from the positive to one side of the fuse, the other side of the fuse to the relay 
and then we have our ground and then a 12 volt trigger source and then this goes all the way to our fuse block that we ran so i'll go in and show you how it's working So this ended up working good since you can see before I'm not using that injector circuit, that 10 amp right there, because I don't have the factory stuff anymore. So I got my little power probe tool here and I'll show you that this is only a key on source. So we have zero voltage there. And I'll go ahead and turn the key to the run position. Now we have battery voltage there. And then I'll show you, turn the key back off. God, I hope you can see under here. Oh. Our fuse block up in here. There we go. We got nothing with the key off. Zero. Turn the key back on. Now we have voltage. So now our fuse block only comes on with the key on source. That's exactly what I wanted. Turn this back off. So I'm pretty happy with it. it turned out good and clean. Now, if you wanted to have that fuse block have power all the time, all you would do is change your trigger wire that you had on that trigger terminal, and you would just run it straight to your battery, and then your fuse block would have power all the time. But I just wanted it to be a key on source because of things like my distributor. I only wanted the distributor to have power when the key was turned on, and there's a relay built into the electric fans I have, and I'm gonna run one wire to the trigger for this relay. And then I have some extra circuits. One I'm gonna use for the sniper to turn on with the key on. And then I have three extra circuits to use and I think it's a lot better than piggybacking off of the original stuff. But that's gonna be it for this one. Um, I'm gonna get back to fishing and installing the sniper setup. So if you wanna check that out, go ahead and check that out. But I uh, hope this was helpful to some people out there. I mean, I don't know everything about wiring by far, but I did a lot of research and I think this is going to be a good, safe, reliable way to run an extra fuse block keyed on power source. But uh, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and uh, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do. But I appreciate you watching.